Hey everybody, welcome to another Glasgow Secret Geometry. So today I'm exploring a part of town that I don't know that well. Uh, we're in the East End, and uh, this is an area that you wouldn't think would be significant because it's largely uh, an industrial area, lots of manufacturing, and traditionally there was lots of mills and dye works and bleach works and stuff along the river here. But it turned out to be quite important in Harry Bell's scheme of the Glasgow network of aligned sites. And that's because there are at least five alignments happened to cross here. And uh, even Harry had trouble believing that this was actually uh, a site worth including. But let's go and have a look. So why is this important in the Glasgow network of aligned sites? I can hear you asking. Well, Harry was surprised too when he found it, because typically the sites he's looking for for his alignments are high points in the landscape, you know, hilltops, mounds, that sort of thing. And here we are on the banks of the River Clyde, which is about as low as you could get. And yet when he was plotting his, his alignments, he got at least five of them pass through this point. So he figured it must be important and as it was a traditional fording point of the river, uh, he figured that that's probably why. There was probably some sort of settlement here and people used the, this place to cross the river. And if you're coming up from uh, Tinto Hill up from the southeast into Glasgow, up one of his major alignments from Tinto Hill up towards Duncombe, you would naturally come upon this point and the river is shallow enough to ford here to get you onto the north bank. So that's why he ended up placing it in the network. And it's actually very significant because it lines up, it's on a straight line alignment through uh, Rutherglen Parish Church, along Rutherglen Main Street, up through Camp Hill and onwards to Crookston Castle, going towards the west. And to the east, uh, it goes to another couple of sites. There is a, a burial pit that was found with two decorated urns containing um, cremated bones at Kyle Park in Uddingston. And uh, just beyond that, about a mile beyond, there was another one found at View Park. And these are both exactly on this alignment. So this is one of the fording points that Harry talks about. Uh, this is the King's Ford, which is also called the Thief's Ford, and it's just beside the Clydeford Bridge, about where the, uh, the Kirk Burn enters the, the River Clyde. And Harry says um, it looks like an excellent place for fording the river. So I'm not too convinced about that, uh, but I don't think I would like to do it today because the water does seem quite high. The other important thing about this site is that it ended up forming the eastern corner of what Harry came to call the Glasgow Triangle. And this is the sort of central triangle of sites that all his alignments seem to radiate out from. So along this baseline, this is the eastern point of the baseline, uh, if you imagine it runs through to Camp Hill and onto Crookston Castle, and into the north it runs up through the necropolis. So uh, forming this rather sort of flat triangle of sites, which everything else seems to radiate from. So it does seem to be quite a significant site. Now I'm going to go and have a look at uh, some of the other sites while we're here because this alignment goes right through Rutherglen. Let's go and have a look. So this rather impressive tumulus is Galloflat Mound on the east side of Rutherglen and I must say it's much more impressive in real life than it looks in the pictures. It used to stand in the parklands belonging to Galloflat House which was on the other side of the main road here and in 1773 they were trying to uh, extend the ditch that used to run around the mound to make a fish pond and workmen discovered a path roughly six feet wide made of unhewn stone leading up to the surface and they also uncovered a couple of Roman-era bronze plates 
uh, inscribed with the name Congalis or Convalis, along with some beads and some other artefacts. Um, so this may possibly refer to St. Conval, who uh, is known to have been active in this area and is one of the four saints that Harry talks about quite a lot in his books. Uh, the mound is really impressive in size. Uh, it's 31 metres it's recorded as, and uh, old records indicate that there was many similar mounds in the area, so suggesting that this was really a very important area in, in prehistoric times. This is the pre-Reformation tower of St Mary's Church, which is all that remains of the earlier church. And the gable you can see here is what's left of an earlier Norman church, which is attached to it on one side. And the Norman church is believed to have replaced St Conville's original wattled edifice, which survived until about the year 1100. Uh, the church belonged to Paisley Abbey at one point, but it was rebuilt in 1791. But the churchyard here is noticeably higher. It's about one and a half metres higher than the surrounding ground level and the retaining wall next to the road uh, keeps it uh, enclosed. And Harry thought that this was because there used to be a large tumulus here. Old records state that there was a, a large mound here, rather like the Galliflats mound, which was levelled out to make the churchyard. Now, more recent historical events happened on this site. This is the location where William Wallace completed a peace treaty between England and Scotland in 1297 and where John de Menteith subsequently agreed a pact to betray Wallace in 1305, events which are marked by this plaque on the wall and commemorated annually with due ceremony. So, that's uh, St Mary's Church Rutherglen and the Rutherglen Lay of Harry Bell. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.